In step 20 of the construction of the Nike Hercules, uh, we had painted the tubes and I did this off camera because I need to do it outdoors. But now my tubes are olive drab and now we're going to go on to step 21, which is to remove the tape that we had put on there. Uh, there's also tape on these edges right here. Inspect that to make sure that there's no paint on that edge. And if there is, scrape it off because we're going to be gluing this. And the glue does not like to stick to paint. It likes to stick to bare cardboard. Uh, there's also tape here. And again, I'm going to scrape that paint off. All right, and then there are B tubes. We had put tape over the little slots. Okay, step 22 is to use wood glue and we're going to glue these to this piece right here. If you want, it says that you can put glue around this hole here because that goes around that cross piece there. That adds a little bit more glue. Again, if, if there's going to be glue on it, it really helps to scrape the paint off to get a better bonding on that piece. Okay, so we're going to put glue on here and here. Attach that to here like that. Do the same on this one. We're going to tape it all and we're also going to use our tube couplers and we're going to put those into the tubes. Let's get started. Here I'm going to use thick super glue, but you got to kind of work fast because we don't have a lot of time once we start using super glue. So I'm just using thick glue going around the perimeter just a little bit. some tape on here to hold it down. Do the same on this one. And to put our couplers in the plastic piece like we did before and then slide those into the tubes so that we know we have everything aligned perfectly. All right, just like that. We gotta let that dry so that we can go on to step 24. Okay, we're on step three of the assembly of the Nike Herc. I already pulled the couplers out of the tubes because it's now dry. Our next step in 24 is we're going to take this piece and we're gonna take our uh, coupler and stick it in there like this and then take a pencil. We're pushing this in all the way and we're gonna mark around the perimeter. And we're gonna do this for all four of them, the two long ones and the two short ones. Now on the short ones, once you do that, you wanna mark the side that sticks out because we're going to remove the red paper from this area. The reason for this, um, this one I've done up already, because we have four tubes, we need to make sure that these slide in and out easily. Removing just that little bit of red paper helps tremendously as far as how easy this is to pull in and out. There's a lot of areas where it can get tilted. Once it's tilted, like if it was tilted this way, it's not going in. So to give that extra little bit of room to make sure that it goes in straight, we're going to remove the paper there. So now the process is, um, so I have my coupler. I'm going to take a sharp hobby knife and you have to do this carefully because we don't want to cut all the way through. We just want to score the red paper. Um, kind of look at my finger here. It's, it's on the edge of the paper kind of stabilizing my knife so that my knife doesn't stray far off of that line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. There's a lot of leeway and you're never going to see this inside the rocket. So just go around one time. 
And now we have to peel the red. And what you're thinking is, I'll start from the edge right here where it's overlapped, and I'll just peel this way. I found it's actually easier to pull it off right from where that cut line you made. And the reason is because when the manufacturer makes them, it kind of rolls that edge and it kind of really pushes that red paper against the brown paper. But here we have a nice fresh cut line so it's actually a little bit easier to remove. It's still hard and it's still gonna take you some time, but kind of get underneath it, find that edge, lift it up like that. So I got it started. I hold my knife like this with my thumb right on the blade so I don't gouge myself and then I can kind of lift it up and get it started. And peel up. If it doesn't come up all the way, you're gonna have to sand it off. Okay, so that's one side. So now here's the small one. I'll do another one for you. So you're gonna do that to all four of them, just like that. Now, step 25, we're gonna take our Kevlar shock cord. Now this is the one foot long piece that we had cut off previously. And we're gonna take the bulkhead disc, and this is a CBD, 41.6, which means that it's for a tube coupler. Pop that middle out. We're going to take this and we're going to tie a knot on one end. Keep the ends less than an inch long. So just kind of roll it over that way so they're not hanging out too much. And then we're going to take that and we're going to push it through the hole and then pull it through like that. And step 26 was to pull it through there. Step 27 is we're gonna mix up some epoxy. Have a piece of plastic here that I mix on. So I've got 15 minute epoxy. We're gonna do this twice. So um, just taking my epoxy and I'll put an equal amount on uh, both sides. Mix it up. Okay, so now this, we're gonna take one of the long couplers we're going to stick it in here and we're going to bond it in to the front. And I might put a, just a little bit of super glue on it just to hold it in place. So it's going to be about one quarter of an inch from the front end, which is this red end. Um, and the reason for that is so that that knot doesn't go all the way to the top. I like this. Make sure that when you put it in that it's not crooked. And what we don't want Make sure that the Kevlar doesn't get on the edge between the two because it's going to make that bulkhead crooked and then it's going to make this oval instead of round and we want to keep it round. Take my epoxy and I'll go around on both the front and the back. I'm going to use my finger. I'm putting a fillet on both sides and then take this and Put epoxy on that and smoosh it down against the uh, upper surface. And in 15 minutes, this will be nice and hard. Step 28 is to take the 3D printed insertion guides. And those are these right here. And the purpose of these, since these are thinner now and they're still a sharp edge, getting them to go into the tubes is going to be hard. So what we did is printed a little radius corner that makes it easier to put these into the tubes. You want to inspect these, make sure that they go into the tube fine, and then we're going to glue them in with super glue. Try not to get too much glue on your shock cord there. So I'm just putting it around the inside edge. And we also want to clean up this edge. So if you feel around it, there's some little parts that stick up from the 3D printing process. We're just going to sand those off. And if you want to sand that surface a little bit, that's fine, you can do that. Okay, so do that to all of them. Once these are cleaned up, we'll go ahead and start step 29. And so I'll be right back in just a few seconds while I clean all these up. Okay, in step 29, we're going to temporarily install these couplers into the uh, transition aft end. And the important thing is that the two long ones are opposite each other, so they're 
They're crisscross. And then the two short ones like that. Um, and just kind of stuff your uh, shot cord in there. So right now we ju we're just testing to make sure that everything will go in nice and smooth. And it does. So that's good. So I'm going to pull this out. And now we're going to mix up some more epoxy and bond these in place. On these, I just want to put a little bit on the edge. Once we start putting it in, it's all going to slide up. And before I stick them all in, I'm going to do all of them. I have some um, alcohol ready, and this is to clean up any excess epoxy that oozes out. So again, we're going to put this into here, and we're trying to look around the edge to see how much epoxy is oozing up. Mine is actually pretty good. Push them all the way in. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to temporarily install it into the tubes. We don't want to push it in all the way because if there's any excess epoxy that's up there, we don't want to bond this in. We just want to make sure that everything's aligned. So we're just going to temporarily just kind of stick it in just a little bit, just like that. So I don't want to go in all the way. So just to make sure that there's no epoxy that could stick to this. I'm just going to let the epoxy harden and then we'll go on to step 31. So step 29 was temporarily fit. Step 30 was to bond it in with the epoxy.